James Lutton for Pro Boxing Fans. Delighted to join on Zoom today with Clarence Bones. Adam Bones, how are you? I'm good this morning. How are you guys doing? Very good, thank you. Thanks for joining us. Um, how's lockdown been for yourself? How's what? How's lockdown, lockdown. been for yourself? You know what? It wasn't. It wasn't bad here. We was locked down for for like you know a couple months, and I just started opening up again for a few fighters who, um, you know, always clean up, had everything disinfected. So it's a little bit slow, and I'm enjoying it right now. Not not too many people here. Absolutely, the gyms are very close to your home. Um, yes, <laughs> <laughs> not so far from the walk down the back of your garden. Um, yes, a little bit about this. when you first opened the gym. It was originally to be rented out to fighters for the camps. What changed? Well, no, what, what happened is, is yeah, when we bought this, um, since uh, 2003 or so, we had fighters, you know, um, and it was always staying busy because they had a lot of fights here. And then when the crash came, it was in 2007, 8, whatever, um, fights, when, when the fights started coming back up, they started coming up in other places. So not too many people come here to camp, you know, um, so less people came. And one thing that's another, so I'm in the house now, and then years go by. Then uh, three years ago, uh, April 1st, I became a professional boxing trainer. So since I was doing that, I was training fighters myself. It's pretty much open to anyone. But you still can get that private time if you want to rent the gym. Absolutely. Now, as a coach, you first started out learning from Ishmael Salas and Joel Casamayor. What did you learn from those guys? The a wealth of experience there with those two? Well, um, not really Joel Casamayor. Um, him and I were on the same level. Um, but I just, just well, what I learned from what I, listen, what I know, like just to kind of go from myself teaching and stuff, you know. I, I was really interested in learning how to uh, become a trainer. So what I learned with, with Ishmael Salas is that this, when guys was in front of me and I was working with them, they go, oh, you know, this is exactly what Salas was saying. I knew I was on the right track. When Salas had him up in the ring and doing pad work with him because Salas wouldn't allow me to do that at the time, he, um, he they go, oh, yeah, that's a bone set. So I knew I was on the right track. If he's supposed to be one of the greats and I'm saying the same thing he is, I'm definitely on the right track to uh, – you know what I'm doing. When was it that you knew you'd make a good trainer? Um, probably about a year ago. Yeah. It, took, it took me some time to get together, and every day I'm still learning and stuff. You know, like things that I naturally just, 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 just I was just gifted, born, just born to fight, born to know what to do, how to do it, but teaching other people because they don't have the same knowledge and skills that you do. So breaking everything down for these guys and um, letting them really understand why and how is why they should be doing it and when they should be doing it. Now you, in your past, you've battled addictions. You've served, wrongfully served prison time. Now these life lessons that you've had, how does that help you mentoring these young prospects that you've got? Well, I mean, it should help a lot because I'm telling these guys that there's, there's that whatever they do, they're going through, whether it be women, whether it be managers, promoters, drug, whatever the situation they're going through, I guarantee you, I've been through it, and just trust me. And and, and you know, and then some some of them, a lot, a lot of the younger guys too, they try. Well, I you know, I'm different. I go, no, no, you're not. You're not any different. So then they try to argue with me a little bit. So I, I shut them up. But I go, I go, yeah, I, um. I got two world title belts in my house. How many you got? So they go, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> and it shuts them up real quick. Absolutely, I bet. Um, what's it like being in Vegas? I'd say the heart of Vegas. You're, you're not on the strip. You're away from it a little bit. It's more private. What's it like being there, obviously, where all the big fights happen? You know, it's, it's great. I mean, I, I love being here. Um, and I, I am off the strip, but yet when, when you stand from my master bedroom, you you see the whole strip. Walk on my balcony, and you um, hear all the fireworks, see everything. It, it was I'm like far enough away from the strip yet, not far enough. But it, but it's, it's it's great, and it's an honor. I, my, I was so happy that I got to fight in the outside Caesar's Palace before they canceled the fight. So I was very blessed then. Do you like the fact that your gym is so private? It's it's away from the strip. Do you prefer that? Oh, yeah. You know what? I, I do. And I have a lot of people that finally sometimes they go, you're hard to find. And that's for a reason. I, I like it like that. You know, I, I see it. Sometimes I do. I see cars go up and down trying to look for the place, but they don't know where it's at. 
and and I really I really really like that. A lot of uh, fighters who are really wanting to fight and take care of themselves, they like that privacy and stuff because they can come in there, close the gate, lock it up, and and no one even knows they're here, you know. And um, a lot of fighters love that. But the, then again, a lot of the fighters that you can you pay for it and get that, but a lot of fighters think that um, I'm doing them the favor by having them. And, you know, it's, it's a business. So and since this quarantine happened, I cut down. I used to let everybody in for free and do whatever. But now you know, I, I changed my mind. I was like, forget this, man. So I can certainly vouch. It's definitely hard to find. When I came up in February, I certainly had to go past it a couple of times in the cab when I was in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Let's talk about uh, Amir Khan. I think it was last year you joined his team um, before the. It was meant to be Goya and then it was Bilal Dib. How's how's that going with Amir Khan? What's it like to work with Amir? Um, you know what? I, you know what? I, I got it. I just got to say this is that um, it was a pleasure working with Amir, and just just nowhere near. You know, you would think a guy who has that much money, the, the, the titles, the just, I mean, um, he just he just listened, he soaked it, and he did what I asked him to do. He fought the way I wanted him to fight. He did, he did everything. It was just a pleasure because even these young guys who ain't even made it, they don't do that. It was just a, a pleasure and an honor to be able to work with him. And he was just, he was just tremendous. I mean, it was a great opportunity. And then then again, too, that, that was the funny thing about Amir, I was just looking at the pictures yesterday. Um, when Amir came here to fight Canelo, he trained at my gym. And I was, just, I was over there and, um, Sis, you know, Sis Duran and I are like, just, they're just, they're, they're, I love him to death. He, um, he also, he's, he's like one of the few people that really helps me out, uh, in boxing. And he, I was there and it was, there was training and stuff. And then, you know, you know, like, I was just saying some things, you know, and then Sis was like, man, you should become a trainer. I go, F you never out train fighters. F, you know, forget that, forget that. And then here I find myself a couple of years later as the trainer me. I was like, it was, so it was, it was a great honor. Well, I know there's no fights in the pipeline. Amir's recently said, depending on how long this lockdown goes, he's not sure how long he's got left in the sport himself. From his coach and trainer's perspective, what is next for Amir? Where should he be going, in your opinion? Well, I, honestly, I no, no lie, because I'm kind of stuck, stuck here. Um, and he's more mobile, but I, I know he likes to be in England right now with his family and stuff. I um, I think he needs to be here with me, really, and and just getting the groundwork. If he's gonna plan on fighting again, um, because he, he's he's got to change and he changed his last fight somewhat. You know, he fought the ESN. he fought exactly what I asked him to do, and it went exactly with the, I said go three or four rounds, and I think he did. And just I said if you fight this way. So he, he fought exactly what I asked him to, and he, and he did. He did. He did perfect. But he needs to come over here and practice to make him. He, there's a, he needs to change his style and change the way he is because he's too predictable right now. So would you prefer him to be out in Vegas full time or just during camp? Well, I, mean, I, I would like to see him come out here for a little bit. Then he can go home, come back here for a little bit, and go home because you know it's a long time to be away from your family, away from them coming back and forth. But he can go back and forth. Just you know, saying, come here month or so you start working go back there work a little bit come back here a month or so you know what I'm saying back and forth and without giving too much of the game plans away but what does he need to change in your opinion um patience you know patience you know he just is just yeah, he just need to be patient he rushes in everything so he doesn't even know how to, he doesn't even know how to hold someone have you ever seen him hold anyone he is hurt. He's trying to fucking fight back. Just fight. He just, he just can't. I mean, first instinct, hold him, get you to get together. He never ever started out of hold. So, I mean, just this, like I'm saying, like, there's a few things that we need to work on to make his career last longer. And the fights that he does have, win them. Is that the reason why you feel he has lost the fights he has lost previously? Is his patience? Um, I know, I know for a fact that, especially with the Crawford fight, um, just yeah, just your patience. It's not. It's a lack of boxing knowledge and knowing. You know, because here, here, here's what happens when, because it happens to me. When, when you have talent and you're gifted like Amir was, and if you're winning, no one says shit to you because you're winning. You know what I'm saying? Not until you lose, then they want to change something or do something to work with you or something like that. You know. But Amir, ever since I've known him, he just do whatever the coach says. 
but he just fights off of instincts and what he's been taught since a baby. You know, I fought since I was five years old. He fought since he was a child, I think eight, nine, something like that. He was very young. And just when you when you just talent and it's a gift, no one no one messes with you. You're doing good. Just just if it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's how they think. Definitely. Um, in terms of the guys who are based over in Vegas with you, when I came out in February, I saw Blair Cobbs, Ray Salim, Keith Hunter, a lot of young, hungry prospects. Right. How far can these guys go, in your opinion? Excuse me? How far can these guys go? Um, well, I, I know one thing for sure. Um, I mean, Blair Cobbs and Raiz are two of the kind of the same. I, um, I, don't, I don't work with neither one of them anymore. But I still manage both of them, or co-manage with them. Um, they got unbelievable talent, but they're they're very hard to coach. They're, I mean, they're very hard. They're not coachable, you know. So, like I said, Amir. That's what I'm saying. Like people like Amir doing what I ask them to do, and and, and or anyone anyone that asks Amir to do anything, whether it be Alex Reza run ten miles or do this or jump, he didn't. He's okay, and he just does it. Well, these guys, those two like Raiz and Blair. Uh, kind of fight and argue. Well, I don't see a reason for that. I don't know why this. And they just they kind of argue back. You know what I mean? Um, Keith Hunter, I believe at 135, 140, 147, he can win a title in every single weight division. And uh, he does what I ask him to do. Pretty much so. I mean, he has his um, what's it difficulties, I guess you could say. But he's trying to help that work and work on that. But he, I'm mean, telling you. He's the devastating puncher. Last time he weighed 141, he's like 6'1", 6'2". He weighed 141, he ate twice that day. So I know he can make 35. We, 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 we will fight anybody at 135, 140, or 47. How far do you think Keith is from the top tier at those weights? Who, Keith? Yep. Um, I, 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 maybe he's overshared, but listen. Within two fights, I would I would not even be afraid to put him in Lemonchenko at 135. I think that he beats Lemonchenko at 135. Just just his skills, his height, his his ability, his his strength. I mean, because he looks like a toothpick, but he's strong as hell. <laughs> it's a big 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 bold statement. I like it. Yeah. Um, it's true. I just his ability. It's kind of like a Deontay Wilder, but smart. You know what I'm saying? You know, just he's just so strong. He looks like a stick, but he's strong as hell and can punch him. The only difference is Keith has boxing knowledge, and I'm helping him give it to him, and, and he's putting it together. Absolutely. Um, I saw on your Instagram recently this week pictures of Daniel Vargas. Um, yeah. On the way there. Um, over here in England, he has been not called out as such, but Conor Ben said he would be an ideal fight for him. He'd like to fight Samuel Vargas. What are your thoughts on that? Is there Has there been any talk at all for Vargas? Who, who, who fights Samuel Vargas? Uh, Conor Ben. Oh, no. Um. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Sorry about that. I just... <coughs> no, there's no big talk. <coughs> we're, talking, we're, talking, we're talking about it past this next guy first. No. <coughs> Virgil, geez. <coughs> Virgil is the next superstar. And we got Sam, who is an older gentleman. Um, who I think is, I'm telling you, is a live underdog. The live underdog, I'm telling you, like, this guy, phenomenal. And we're working on a game plan, and um, he's listening to me. He's putting it together. And as long as it just keeps coming, he, he feels good. He, he looks good. Everything just comes together um, perfectly, like it has been. Man, we, we're going to pull a huge upset. And then we'll talk about other things. How, how tough will the Bertie's fight be for him? As you mentioned, he's a very good prospect. We all know that. Just how tough is it, or is Samuel potentially too experienced for him at this point? Um, well, I, ho I hope that Samuel's too experienced for him. And plus, what we're putting together right now, um, we'll just outsmart him because there's no way that we're going to be outstrength him. He's a young, strong, big uh, welterweight, and there's no there's no way in hell we're going to be able to go in there and muscle him around. So. We, we got a game plan. We're working on it. I think that if we do it properly and everything goes as, as, as well as we hope, we will beat him. You know, um, and then next thing you know, we'll, we'll fight anybody at 147 because 
if he's supposed to be the next great thing, we're ready for a world title. Absolutely. Um, are there any other dates in the pipeline for any of the other fighters at all? Um, I got uh, Diego Magdaleno. Um, I think he's fighting August 22nd. But then, you know, then again, they got to give or take with, it, with that as well. So, I mean, give or take a few weeks. Absolutely. And very finally, Bones, uh, top rank obviously have returned in America on the big stage. We've seen that over the last few weeks. Have you heard about any other promoters coming into or coming back into boxing in the near future? Um, no, but we're, we're talking about me and my friend, um, Robert um, Gonzalez. We are trying to put stuff together right now as we speak. We're, we're trying to get to together a promotional team and stuff and get things going and get these fighters, get these fighters busy. Fantastic. Hopefully you see that come along very soon. But Bones, thank, oh, you very much. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much for joining me today. I appreciate it. I know it's early over there. Thank you. Thank you. I, I say good morning, but it's good night over there. So good night. <laughs> I appreciate you guys. Thank you for everything. No worries at all.